This is the final revision lecture for Unit 1 and we're going to look at acids and bases. We measure acidity by using the pH scale and the pH scale runs from below 0 to above 14 but within a school lab the solutions we use usually lie between the range of 0 and 14. Now 7 represents the pH of a neutral solution. Any number less than 7 is acidic and the further away from 7 you are the more acidic it is. So pH 1 is more acidic than pH 6.7. And any number above 7 is alkaline and the further away from 7 you go the more alkaline it is. If you use universal indicator to measure the pH of a solution then the corresponding colours are green for a neutral solution. Acids are red, orange and yellow, with the red being the most acidic. And alkalis, blue, indigo, violet, purple, uh, with the purple, violet being the most alkaline. Now, examples of Household acids are things like citrus fruits, like lemons and oranges, vinegar, soft drinks, fizzy drinks like Coca-Cola or Iron Brew. Examples of household alkalis are things like, well, usually cleaning products, things like soaps and toothpastes, uh, bleach. Now, when we're talking about acids, the three main acids we tend to use and you should know the chemical formula for these three. So the hydrochloric acid which is HCl, nitric acid which is HNO3 and sulfuric acid which is H2SO4. So you should know those three chemical formula and recognise them in the chemical equations to be hydrochloric, nitric and sulfuric acid. Now what all these have in common and all acids have in common is that they have very high concentrations of H plus ions. But a good, it's not a good enough definition of an acid to say it's a solution containing H plus ions because neutral solutions like water also contain H plus ions. They contain a very small amount of H plus ions and they're kind of cancelled out by equal number of hydroxide ions. So in neutral solutions, you do have a little bit of H plus and a little bit of OH minus ions, which is why water can conduct electricity a wee bit. But in acids, you have a greater concentration of H plus ions than you do in neutral solutions. And in alkaline solutions, you have a greater concentration of hydroxide ions than you do in neutral solutions. Now the next fact that's really important to remember, and people always seem to have a bit of a problem remembering this, is that non-metal oxides which dissolve in water will produce acidic solutions. For example, if you dissolve sulfur dioxide in water you'll get sulfuric acid. Okay. You may remember from the fertilizer section, if you dissolve nitrogen dioxide in water you get nitric acid. Now the way to remember this Hopefully you should remember that sulfur, di sulfur dioxide gas is a gas responsible for acid rain. Okay, So if you keep that association in your head, sulfur dioxide and acid rain, it can remind you that it's the non-metal oxides which produce acidic solutions. And the opposite is true for metal oxides. Metal oxides which dissolve in water produce alkaline solutions. But if you look at the table of solubilities in your data booklet, you'll see that very few metal oxides are actually soluble in water. It's mainly the group 1 metals, the alkali metals, and that's why they're called alkali metals. So that's another way of remembering that the metal oxides which dissolve in water give you alkaline solutions. So you've got sodium oxide, potassium oxide, lithium oxide, and a couple of group 2 metals as well, barium oxide and calcium oxide. 
So these metal oxides which dissolve in water give you an alkaline solution. If they don't dissolve in water, they don't affect the pH. Right, let's look at what happens when you neutralise an acid. Well, three things happen. Firstly, it becomes less acidic and the pH will increase towards 7. And it does this because H plus I's are actually being removed from the solution and they'll be turned into something else, water or hydrogen gas normally. And you also always see a substance called a salt being produced. So let's look at a variety of neutralisation reactions. Right. The substance which neutralises the acid is called a base. And the bases you should be aware of are metal hydroxides, metal oxides, metal carbonates, or some just metals. In some textbooks they argue about whether or not a metal is actually a base. I think for the purposes of National 5 we'll just assume it is. So if you act a met acid with a metal hydroxide, you get a salt and water. The metal oxide, the same, a salt and water. So this is where the H plus ions go, into the water. If it's a metal carbonate, again it's a salt and water but the carbonate also produces carbon dioxide gas. And if you react an acid with a metal, you get a salt again. This time you get hydrogen gas produced. So be aware that these two reactions produce gases. And we've used them in the past to do experiments about rates of reactions, because you can measure the mass loss due to the gas escaping from the reaction vessel, or we can collect the gas and measure the volume of gas being produced. Of course not all metals will react with acids and you need to use your electrochemical series to find out if the metal reacts with an acid. Halfway down your electrochemical series there's hydrogen there. So all these metals up here do react with acids. The ones down here copper, silver, mercury and gold don't react with acids. I want to concentrate now on the salt that's produced in all these reactions. Now if you're neutralising hydrochloric acid the salt you're going to produce will be a metal chloride. So the metal replaces the H plus ions in the hydrochloric acid. If it's nitric acid you produce a metal nitrate, sulfuric acid, you produce a metal sulfate. So it's important that you're able to identify and name the salt produced in neutralisation reactions. So let's look at a couple. So let's say we neutralise nitric acid with sodium hydroxide. The salt we'll produce would be sodium nitrate and the other product uh, it's a salt plus water so sodium nitrate is the salt and then we get water okay how about sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid so the salt is going to be something chloride we use sodium carbonate so it's going to be sodium chloride get water and because it's carbonate we also get carbon dioxide. How about if we react copper oxide with sulfuric acid? Well it's to be something sulfate because we've got sulfuric acid so it will be copper sulfate will be our salt and again plus water and one more example if we react magnesium with hydrochloric acid well magnesium is above hydrogen electrochemical series so we do get a reaction and the salt we'll make would be magnesium chloride 
and this time because it's a metal it's not water that the hydrogen ions get turned into they get turned into hydrogen gas so make sure you can name the salt produced in a neutralization reaction right and the last thing we need to do in acids and bases is to do calculations associated with volumetric titrations so I'm just going to work through a typical exam style question in which you normally given the information in this context there's information in the diagram here the hydrochloric acid in the burette it's got this concentration this is your base the sodium carbonate and this is the experimental results to working out the volume of hydrochloric acid required to neutralize the sodium carbonate so the first question, using the results in the table, calculate the average volume in cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid required to neutralise the sodium carbonate solution. Okay. So first thing, always for your final results, you ignore the rough titer. So you just work with the other titers. You choose the two results that are within 0.2 of each other. You've actually got only two results here. 15.9 and 16.1 okay. that number was obtained by subtracting your initial burette reading from your final okay. so 15.9 16.1 are within 0.2 of each other add them together divide by 2 to get the average and you get 16.0 cubic centimeters okay. and then the second question it gives you the equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate. It says using your answer from part A, the 16 cubic centimetres. So let's just write that in there. Calculate the concentration in moles per litre of the sodium carbonate solution. So really it's like one of those calculations based on balanced equations. with a slight, diff, slight twist to it. So we circle the two things of interest which for a titration is always the two things on the left hand side of the arrow so it's the hydrochloric acid and the sodium carbonate we put what the mole ratio is, it's 2 to 1 and then the third step we use the information in the question to work out the number of moles we've actually got of one of those things and we can work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid because we've got its concentration and we've got its volume so the number of moles of hydrochloric acid C times V C was 0 0.1 the volume 16 divided by a thousand so that's 0 0.016 so that equals 0 0.0016 moles you do tend to get these very small numbers, don't be put off by them. So, if we've got 0 0.0016 of hydrochloric acid, we must have half that amount of sodium carbonate, which is, let's go back to blue, 0 0.0008 moles. In the previous questions, of calculations based on balanced equations the last step is to work out the mass of the unknown the titration normally you have to work out the concentration so the concentration of the sodium carbonate is number of moles over the volume so the number of moles of sodium carbonate is 0 0.0008 the volume and you're told here so just need to remember you get a lot of your data from the picture so 10 divided by 1000, which is 0 0.010. So that divided by that is 0 0.08 moles per litre. Okay, so finally, five things you must be able to do about acids and bases. Firstly, you should be able to use the pH scale. Secondly, you should recognise the name and chemical formula for the three common acids, sulfuric, 
nitric and hydrochloric. You should be able to recognise bases, metal oxides, metal hydroxides, metal carbonates and the reactive metals, and predict the products of neutralisation reactions. You should be able to name the salt produced in neutralisation reactions and you should be able to carry out calculations based on titrations.